Hello, Tile friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Tile Money Podcast. My name is Luke Miller, your host, and this is the podcast where we get into all things the business of being a tile contractor. As I like to say, tile money is strengthening the tile industry. We are doing this with business education designed for tile contractors by tile contractors. And this is assisting contractors to build sustainable, profitable businesses. This is gonna result in a much stronger tile industry from the base up. This is the way it has to be. And this is my vision and it's uh, my privilege to be your host today. And today we've got another great interview with another great contractor. Uh, his name is Mind and he owns LFT Pro. And it, you can follow him on Instagram at LFT Pro. I highly recommend you do. You can find him at his website, lftpro.com. We got into all things large format tile, as you can tell by his name. We also talked about the 10,000 hour rule when it comes to uh, learning. And, and so I know you're going to really dig today's interview. It's a, it's a really good one, a lot of value to unpack. Before I let you listen to it, though, I do want to thank our sponsors of the Tile Money Podcast. I want to thank the National Tile Contractors Association. They are the largest and the oldest association in North America for tile contractors. Uh, you know what I always say, if you want, you know, hang around the five people that you want to become and you will find some of the best contractors within the NTCA and you will be able to rub shoulders with them and learn from them. So check them out, tile-assn.com, uh, the National Tile Contractors Association. Uh, the voice of the tile contractor. I want to thank GoBoard from Johns Mansville for sponsoring the Tile Money podcast. GoBoard is a great company, uh, incredible uh, product. They, they, they really take a lot of time to get to know tile contractors, and that is why they're sponsoring this podcast. They do want to hear from you. And uh, if you've never used GoBoard, I, I'd highly recommend you check it out. A great lightweight uh, foam backer board for, your, for all your shower needs. Ladycrete International is a sponsor of this podcast. Thank you, Ladycrete. Ladycrete is a, a great company, uh, invented Thinset right here in America, an American company, and I stand behind them. Uh, they have great family values, and if you've never tried their products, you should check those out for sure. Happy Tile Guy. Happy Tile Guy is the place, the number one place for tile contractors to get uh, affordable tile contractor websites designed for tile contractors by tile contractors. So without further ado, I'll let you get to the podcast interview with Mind. Enjoy, friends. So how long have you been um, a tile setter? How long have you been working um, with tile? We're on 20 years. 20 years now? Yeah, it's yeah. close to 20 years. Yeah, I, I, like, I don't know how I got into the tile business. It was kind of... You know, out of nowhere. Never really? I dreamed even about it to be a tile setter. I remember when I was a child, my my dad's cousin, he's a tile setter. And he used to do bathroom in our house. And I remember it was kind of fall time and I was sick. I was sitting at home and he was working. I was kind of, you know, just sneaking and looking the way he works. And kind of I enjoyed watching it. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Because he's a, he's a cool guy. And, and then after that, you know, it's just teenage life and, you know, partying and all that stuff and and then how i got into it it's um it's like you know weird story i i i'm originally from lithuania and uh like and after soviet union collapsed you know it was not that great in there it's not a lot of work and i was young and i always felt like i'm kind of behind mm -hmm. every success in life you know it's just like something is start booming i'm too young you know uh -huh. or yeah it comes time to do something. I have no money, you know? So it was kind of difficult. So I decided to move to England, UK. And uh, I just worked as a general laborer at the construction site. And I met tile setters. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, do you want to be a helper for us? Because you know, I was busting my ass over there and working hard. And, you know, uh, my language, like English, was not that great at the time. And, you know, I always trying to talk more with people, you know, so I can learn and uh and they invited me to to work but they didn't hire me for their company they said okay this is the guy call him mm -hmm. and he's gonna look after you and it was a big company 
in England, it's uh, Flesher, not sorry, not Flesher, it's, uh, I'm talking, Flesher is here in Canada, but uh, it's uh, Moderno Tile. It's uh, be a group of Nicholas and Clark, so they're making thin sets and everything else. I don't know if he's still around. Oh, interesting. Probably Hot Style, he would know better if yeah. I'm if I'm right about him or not. So the guy took me to a police station to work. It was a brand new police station, and he put me in a prison cells to work. So I got kind of, I never did uh, epoxy grout in my life. And uh, and the police officers were checking like every hour on us, so we grout right, so it's no sharp edges in uh, on the tile. Mm. That's, I said, why worry about it? So because prisoners cut their wrists, you know, the, so then we start bleeding, and then we have to take them to the oh, hospital. Wow. Don't want to do so just for the safety. So that's how I started. And like originally, like after one month working on that grout, uh, the guy who was in charge of me. He said, do you want to do tile? I said, of course. He said, okay, there's the tile. This is the fin set. That's how it's done. He just spread some mastic glue on the wall, slapped those six by sixes on the wall and stayed. It's like, hmm, that looks easy. Right. I took my own, like spread a mortar on the wall, put a tile on, one minute, boom, everything's down on the floor. I said, <laughs> why? I did exactly everything same as you are. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, and he's like, you don't have confidence yet. And you know, in time, everything came by, and like after six months working like that, those guys who in, like asked me if I want to do tile, they took me in, and literally I start tiling after one year myself. Mm. And uh, then after another year, I opened my own company in England, and they used to subcontracting me. I had my own crew, and since then, I just doing tile. I had a break in my life uh, actually after ten years. I said, no, I don't want to do it anymore. I can't. You know, it was kind of, I'm done with it. And, uh, but you know, all that rule, 10,000 hours, when you do your 10,000 hours, right. everything changing. like I never believed in that, Yeah. but actually it is true. It's like, you know, you just hit that 10,000 hours and next day you're a completely different person and you know <laughs> what you're doing. You have a lot of confidence and boom, it's going. <laughs> so. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard I've heard of this ten thousand hour, you know, uh, rule of thumb, so to speak. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more for in, for the audience who maybe isn't isn't familiar with it? It's actually, I got that from my wife. Okay, now it's like I never thought about that before, uh, you know. But then I start thinking, you know, when it's changed because she, she, my wife, is always reads a lot of books and she likes to read. I I might read it something, but I just don't have time. Right. I always. I have all those projects in my head. It's even like, you know, some, I hear it on your podcast. Some other guys be, um, be like, oh, I already have everything laid out for my job for tomorrow in my head already. So that's, I'm the same person. I do my job day before in my head. So when I come to the job site, I know what I'm doing. And, you know, she mentioned that about uh, athletes, you know, when athletes, you know, when they reach that 10,000 hour right. goal, they becoming way better at what they do and the skill. And that's what she was saying all the time for our kids, you know, guys, it's, it doesn't come right away. Work, 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 and then you'll see. And it, it is true. And then I start realizing about those 10,000 hours when I, I, I have, when we moved to Canada, like it's, you know, like when you come from somewhere else, it's always those immigration process. So it was difficult. And for me, I was so lucky when I came in, in Alberta, that's where I'm, uh, I'm at. They needed tradespeople mm -hmm. and tradespeople usually like here in Canada, it's like electrician, um, sprinkler system, oil and gas and uh, plumber. This is kind of certified trades, you know, license. Everybody else is no, you know, so it means like anyone can do that. And, um, and, you know, and then we had entire list of the trades we needed because it was booming here. So the tile setter was on the list. So what I did, I got my all hours, what I worked in England, um, from the company, they sent a letter to me. So I submitted to, um, uh, to the education board. Uh, so they approved it and they let me to do my journeyman's red seal exam. Mm. And uh, and then that's when I realized how many hours I have. When they sent it to me, it was nine thousand five hundred hours. That's what I needed. And then you know I started kind of calculating how how many hours averagely I work a day and how yeah. many years. And that's you know that's ten thousand hours. And then when it's changed in my life, you know, you you become different person you know like in the beginning like when all of us we start we struggling with a lot of things even like when you put a tile and something is not 
level, you don't want to lift it up. You just, ah, it's going to be fine. And right. then, of course, when you have to sign off on the job, customers say, oh, why this style is so low? You know, it's like trying to make it up some stories. Why? But actually, the, <laughs> the truth behind it, because you were lazy to lift it right. up, you know, and yeah. it's, you know, it's like you, you, it's like, it's like a child, you know, you, you grow up. That's, that's what it is after 10,000 hours. Yeah. 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 That's good. It's, it's a good, it's a gr- good rule of thumb. And I, I, yeah, it's definitely, um, it's, it's, it's neat to look at what, what year was that when you came over to Alberta? I came to Alberta in 2011 spring. Okay. So almost 10 years ago. Yeah. Coming up on 10 yeah, years. It's almost 10 years ago. Yeah. And and before that, how long had you been in a business owner? And and so I I'm business owner like um, so 2001 when I moved first time to England, mm-hmm. and uh, and then I became a business owner in 2003. Okay, yeah. So you know it's like now LFT Professionals is my company. It's a new company. Uh, it's uh, six years for this company. And uh, I used it before my old name, but I felt like that name was not right, you know. And like LFT Professionals is more stands for what I exactly do. It's large form of tile professionals. And uh, yeah, so I'm in business for a long time. Uh, you know, it was bumps and, you know, and high spots in, in, in that. But it, it's... I like to be a business owner because yeah. you don't have a boss. Right. You are the boss. And, you know, if you don't feel good that day, you just call your customers and say, look, I have to take day off today. And, you know, I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to make any mistakes on the, on the job. And, yeah. you know, and, you know, it's just, if you explain nicely, then that's what, you know, that's, that's what I like about it. You don't have to, you know, apologize to somebody Dude, else. So Canadians let you, let you call in sick like that? Oh, no, I don't, I don't usually call sick. I, yeah, I even yeah. think I go to work. But, uh, you know, the biggest problem is here is the employees. To mm. find good employees. Because if you're a good house sitter, you have your own business. Mm, and if you want to hire that good house sitter, you're going to you have to pay them exactly the same what you charge. Right, right. right. It doesn't work that way. And, uh, and some of them are trying to steal your customers. Mm. We, we work sometimes. Like, I, I work with you guys. You know, it's like, it's like a battlefield you know it's like it's only a few guys who's like uh really honest with you and they want to be your friend they admire what you do and you admire what they do but some other guys be just kind of trying to stab you in the back mm. so i'm trying not to have too many tile setters friends it's i have friends in another cities but not in my own yard yeah yeah so you know it's like because we all do different way uh, you see, even in large form of tile business, we do everything different way. Yeah. As I see what others do, what kind of mistakes they make, I keep my mouth shut. I don't see anything. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's, I think it's not, it's not kind of professional to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm trying not to be like others. Others can say, oh, we're doing this wrong. But I know that when I do things, I research everything and everything is by the code and by my material supplier. Mm-hmm. But we can say whatever we want. And I know I'm, I'm saying true for my customer and yeah. I know I will do it right. And I know it's not going to fail. Yeah. That's an important part for sure. Tell me a little bit, if we could just back up a little bit, I do want to talk to you about your business structure right now currently, but let's back up. I don't want to pass this up to, um, you said you, you know, you kind of got over to Canada to, you know, Alberta, what a gorgeous area, um, kind of because they were, you know, putting it out there. They're looking for tile setters. They're looking for tradesperson. So that actually assisted you in your, um, in your move, correct? No, actually it was different. Oh, okay. No, you know, Canada is Canada. So usually when I was a child, I imagine Canada, it's mountains, a lot of snow. Yeah. Like you fish salmon in the rivers, right. uh, bears, wolves, moves around. That's how I imagine Canada. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's a, like a wilderness. Mm. So when time, when time came to choose the place where we want to go. So I had experience to live in London, which is millions of people. Sure. It's too crowded. I didn't like it. Yeah. Because Lithuania is a small country. Our towns are smaller. I don't really like too crowded. So uh, then, you know, Toronto was not a question. I don't want to go to Toronto. It's right. too big. And plus, you know, it's like, it's a lot of Lithuanians down there too. So you don't want to mix up in between of them. You just want to be on your own. So 
uh, I looked at Vancouver, but Vancouver is pretty much like two months of gorgeous weather in the summer and, and then it's raining all the time. Right. And all those clouds above your head, that's what I didn't want it because that's what Lithuania is. It's raining a lot too. So it's kind of autumn is like because September is nice and then it just got nasty. You know, it's just raining and uh, the snow and rain mix. It's kind of gross. So, you know, and then I was thinking maybe, oh, Saskatchewan, it's a lot of lakes. It's nice. And then I kind of did a little bit of research on the Google. It's like, no, it's not a place too. It's like extremely cold in the winter, extremely hot in the summer, a lot of mosquitoes and possibility of tornadoes. Because I see on the news what happens in the U.S. with those tornadoes. I said, no, I want a safety for my family. Right. And Calgary was uh, the city because it was in 88 Olympics. Mm. And then it's like, hmm, Calgary, I should look into it. I looked in Calgary. I found like, few Lithuanians because of course I needed somebody to find to move here and I had no relatives I had no friends in Canada so I kind of got my paperwork sit on the plane flew here and the guy met me I saw him first time in my life he took me in their place after one week I found my own place to live and actually in three days already had work as a tile center I used to change tiles at the airport of uh, international airport of Calgary at nights, you know, and, uh, and then after a month, my family came by. So it was this choice. And then when I was here already, I contacted my lawyer who helped me to do paperwork. And he said, I have a good news for you. Alberta has tile setters on the list for um, nomination for permanent residency. Nice. So that's how I got it in on that boat. I did my exam. Of course, that was difficult. And I was so frustrated because I failed first time. I failed second time. Mm-hmm. And I'm a tile setter. Wow. And uh, but the terminology it's being used here in North America right. compared to England is completely different. So I didn't understood some questions correct. And the main thing, which is going to be funny, it's everything is metric here in Canada, but construction is imperial. Oh, in really? England, everything is imperial, but construction is metric. Right. It's everything millimeters, and it's like, oh my God, inches. And, you yeah. know, feet. it's like, I didn't know what it is. You know, it's like, it was so difficult. And yeah. uh, on the third time I passed it, of course, I had to go to the office and beg. I said, please let me pass for a time. I, I will pass it, I promise. And then I passed it and I got my uh, my certificate. I got a journeyman and then uh, we got permanent residency right away. So that was kind of lucky. lucky yeah. You know, otherwise I wouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, that's great. I mean, you kept persisting, you know, and, and made it happen. And uh, what a, yeah, that, that would be a mind. Uh, are you, are, do you use, um, uh, what, how do you, do you read a tape measure now with millimeters oh, or I inches? I use both plates, uh, but majority is imperial. I yeah. really like it. For me, it's easier. And uh, for my helper, who's from Ecuador, I bought him a uh, dummy tape. So it shows where it's one eight, three eights, five eights, and all of those because he's don't know. And I have right. to say, okay, so it's like uh, seven sixteenths, it's half minus one. Mm-hmm. Or nine sixteenths, it's half plus one. You know, that's what he understands. And it took me two years and his, until he's got used to it. It was yeah. like funny, you know, it's like we have really good relationship with jobs and we're laughing all the time. And, and that was, you know, and that's why I call it, I said, Eddie, can I borrow your dummy tape? You know, sometimes, you know, it's like when I have, I don't, when I don't have my one. Right. And I used to use uh, metric too in the beginning, but now it's mostly only imperial. Mm. It's e- you find it easier then? Yeah, I find it easier. Yeah. Um, it's because, you know, the heights, you know, and tiles mostly is uh, a kind of, in imperial of course porcelain is all metric and right you have to get used to it to to switch and that's where we get into you know with large format tiles especially with the builders when the supplier says oh it's four by eight but it's actually not yeah yeah <laughs> and then the sizes of the room is is out of whack you know i have to build it up usually because it's smaller in size than actually four by eight or five by ten yeah yeah wild wild so how is your company structured? Um, I mean, you're choosing to kind of feature this LFT tile. Uh, first of all, was that, you know, I mean, that wasn't by accident that you really enjoy this type of tile work or is there a high demand where you're at for large so format tile? how it happened, um, I used to work with one supplier in the city. I used to buy all the tiles from them and they brought 
uh, Boulder panels. It's like, uh, I know in the US, I've seen in Arizona, Home Depot sells it. It's a stone veneer panels mm-hmm. right. with right. aluminum backing. Yeah. So that store brought it in and they said, do you want to do it? It's like, because I was working so close with them, I was getting so much work from them. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they knew me that I like to, to be challenged mm-hmm. on anything I do, you know? So, so they... But there was no information how to do it, what kind of tools to use. So I started, you know, I took that risk and was trying to figure out how to do it and all this kind of stuff. And I had a few fails and I stopped doing it for a year. Mm-hmm. And I did very, very big research. And uh, in that time, porcelain tiles came came out. It, uh, the first uh, tile, like large format tile job I did was laminum, 3.5 millimeter tile which is was crazy thin mm-hmm. but i was so surprised how strong it is right if you know how to handle it and usually handling those tiles is just you know it's just in your head you know you lift it up it's not a sheet of plywood first of all you know you can lift it up like a plywood because right. wood doesn't break and tile will so you lift an angle and you know trying not to move you know too much and of course your helper who works with you has to be smart too you know <laughs> so you lift up on the same side, you know, so it doesn't, mm-hmm. you don't feel that kind of break in the hat. So, um, you know, and then little by little, I started researching and that year, you know, when I kind of took a break and, you know, I bumped into Raimondi tools mm-hmm. and it was nothing to buy here. You can order. And uh, it was few companies who tried to sell it, but it was not popular. Uh, this large format. And then like little by little, I got into it. I bought, you know, all my set of tools and then start doing large format tile. You know, and of course, in the beginning, you lie to the customer. Oh, yes, I did a lot. You know, that's what you say. Yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, it's just kind of, it takes longer, you know, until you, you do it and, and, and that's it. You know, it's like little by little and I, I got into it. And uh, every day you do something, you learn, you learn from your mistakes. And yeah. of course, in the beginning, I used to, uh, ask customer to buy extra tile, mm. like one extra sheet. So, you know, it just in case if something breaks, you know, it's covered. Yeah. And uh, it was, it was fine. You know, they were willing to pay that because people who buy this tile, they have money. Yeah. Yeah. It's not for every house, you know, it's mm. like, uh, so I, I kind of made it. I had few fails and I learned from those mistakes, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I fixed it and customers were understanding because it was mostly builders. Mm-hmm. And, uh, with some of them were, I had a good relationship with, you know, I explained, I said, look, I didn't do a lot of it. And, uh, it, it might fail yeah. because, you know, you, you know, from experience, even from smaller size tile, when you have a 90 degree corner cut, sometimes it's cracks right? and it, because of the stress. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and in this case, like little by little, we, we kind of get through it and now we don't have to order extra tile. I charge enough. If I have to supply another tile, I supply. So customer trust me mm. and they, they don't uh, worry about it. You yeah. know, okay, I trust you, you do it, you know, and it's enough money to cover the cost uh, of extra sheet if I have to buy it. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you said, you know, in the, when you're first getting into something like this, you know, like LFT, I mean, first of all, you had hit those more than those 10,000 hours working with a trawl, working with tile. And it goes back to what your original, you know, teacher, the guy who, you know, when that tile fell off the wall, the first thing he said is you said, why did it fall off the wall? He said, well, confidence, you lack confidence. Yeah. So after those 10,000 hours, I mean, you build your confidence, even though maybe you've never touched a five by, you know, 10 foot you know, thin porcelain, large format tile, or whatever the case is, guess what? Very few people did and have even to this day, we're still in 2020 people. It's still, you know, gaining traction. And so it it is the brave uh, ones with confidence that are going to go out there and get this. And it kind of sounds like you almost, you know, you tooled up and, and you were willing to, you know, take on a couple small jobs, but you were Kind of push? Did you push it and kind of bring this to the your your client's attention? Like, hey, I can do this. I mean, how do how do you go about creating a demand for this product? So usually, uh, you know, after like five jobs, I did. I know what I'm what what the beast it is. Right. And a large format tile is exactly same tile as uh, one foot by one foot. It's mm-hmm. exactly the same thing. It's just a bigger scale. Right. So when you mix mortar, you mix uh, mortar. Uh, you know, made for it. So it doesn't mm-hmm. hit in the bucket too quick. 
and you know you have enough water to apply so it's all the knowledge in your head and uh you know so I, and when I came to the customer and I and they say, oh, I would like Vista, I said, okay, what's your budget? Oh, we don't have budget. We want to make it nice and good. Okay, I said, I can suggest something for you. Yeah, sure. This is the large format. That's what I did it. How do you like it? I love it. I said, do you want to do it? Uh, let's try. So some people, you know, be kind of willing to risk it. Some others, no. And you, in in this, uh, like, time, you know, like like in 20 years, I learn read people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like all those little things, it's like before you even meet the customer, when you get to the job site, you see the neighborhood where he lives, you see his house, you see even his landscape, how it looks like and what kind of car he drives. Mm -hmm. And then you bring those questions, you know, about a product. Sometimes I get a phone call and people say, oh, I want to do large form attire. And, uh, you come to the place and all those little factors like car, landscaping, house, neighborhood, it doesn't doesn't match to the large form of tile. And you get inside and you see he wants to do only one bathroom in the large form of tile, which is going to be wow, but everything else in the house, no. And you start talking him down a bit. It's mm-hmm. like it's not worth it to spend this type of money if you don't. Your house doesn't match. If you're not committed. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, let's do this. It's going to be better because... You just like sometimes some people just want to show off, maybe mm-hmm. you know just, that's what I have, but you know it's it doesn't make sense in 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 general to do it, you know, and like or you give a suggestion something else, yeah. you know, it's like okay, let's do this, it's going to be better for this type of room because sometimes what it is, it's like we have a big niche and you you can't just cut square niche in, in a big large form at all because it's going to break. Yeah, the thing is, I can cut it, I can mitre it on the table, but how I'm going to lift it up. It's no way you can lift it up because tile is too heavy to lift it up in one piece. Yeah. So you always you kind of trying to talk them out, and you know it's no no room to do it. And then you know some people is okay with that, and uh, or you come to another job site which is super fancy, and he's got twelve by twenty four, and I say why you have twelve by twenty four? Like when you have a, such a big space, and we can do something spectacular. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then again talk, and uh, and people and people kind of getting convinced, and I say yeah, let's do it. So, so yeah. 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 So you're, you're kind of, you know, you're, you're getting paid. Your job as the business owner is, is to direct these people. They don't know that much about tile. I mean, they might've seen a picture and they're like, that's what I want, but is it really what they want? Is it really what's best for their house and best for their lifestyle, so to speak? And can they afford it? First of all, you know, that budget question was one of the first questions you you brought up. And I think that's something that's missing in a lot of tile contractors conversations. So oh, it's good you advice. Know, and another thing, let's say it's of course some people really want to have something like that. Sure. And and you see that, you know, he's really want it. So then you're trying to find a way, make it possible. I never s- trying to save money on prep work. Never. Right. Because uh, that prep work is the recipe for fail. Yeah. It doesn't matter how beautiful your work is, it's gonna fail. So never save on that. So what I do. Uh, a lot of times, actually, I do. You know, I might would be richer if I wouldn't do that. I give discounts for the customer on a product because here in Canada, retail price is one thing, contractor price is another thing. And like in some stores, we get 40% off, oh, wow. which is a huge discount, yeah. you know? Yeah. So what I do, I tell to customers, I say, look, I get discount. I'm, I'm not a tile store. I don't have to make money on tile. I'm, I'm not selling tile. It's not my business. I said, I will give you a discount on tile. So this is my price for the labor. Mm-hmm. And I have to charge you for deliver this product on site. Yeah. And then they feel that I want to be part of their project and I understand where they are. And this way, it helps me to close the deal with them because I'm honest. Yeah. And and I'm maybe other contractors going to be, you know, Mad at me, I say that, but at the end of the day, it's it's not our business to sell tile. Our our business, tile setters, is to install tile. So better we do our work with a higher price, so we make money, and we leave that for the customer that extra because I understand store gives you forty percent off because you can give something to your customer. Mm-hmm. You know, because yeah. usually when customer come to the store and buy tile with that forty percent markup retail price. They don't want to pay a lot of now for that contractor because they already spent fortune on time. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like 
because average like bathroom renovation here costs like plumbing, demo, tile installation, it's about twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. That's what it costs, like all in. Yeah. So you know, if you can save for the customer something on tile, but you can make more installation, it's still going to be twenty thousand dollars. Right. But yeah. That maybe one thousand dollars extra is going to be back to your pocket. Right. Right. That's right. that's how I see because when customer thinks, oh, I saved money here, so that I will get good service from this guy. You Absolutely. know, that, that's that's how I see, you know, in this case. I always want to give for the customer. I, I listen to those podcasts about, you know, you had with those guys who's really expensive. You know, like I can say I'm expensive too. Mm. And if customer like we have a lot of contractors who makes big bucks on the renovations and they so cheap. And I say to the guy, I said, look, if you can't afford me, why are you calling me? I know, you know, my work, you know, I'm good. You know, it's going to be flawless. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Why are you calling me if you can't afford me? I said, this is my price. Because first of all, you called me right. and you asking for my services. I didn't call you and I didn't ask for work. Right. You know, right. so, and then we find a way, you know, of course, a lot of negotiations happens in, in the long run, but that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good to acknowledge that negotiations do happen. I love that saying, I didn't call you and I didn't ask for work. (laughs) I love that because so many contractors, you know, they're, they just want a deal, you know, and they're out shopping for new tile contractors, uh, for subcontractors. And, you know, they're looking to replace their old contractor for a reason, but they still want the same deal. They still, they think it should be the same price. It's just like, I didn't call you. You called me looking for a new tile contract and these are my yeah, prices. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and it's like, and we have a lot of, like uh, a lot of bad contractors. You oh, know, really? it's like, like I see work and I get phone calls mm. and, uh, you know, and we talk, you know, in between with some, you know, tile setters, as I mentioned, I have friends, you sure, know, and yeah. we always see things, you know, like I have a friend that's a, uh, Chris surfaces on he's on Instagram too and he's from Edmonton mm. and uh, we work together a lot like I I think I started first large format out and he joined me he helped me to do a few projects here in Calgary like we we good friends on yeah it. and I went down there to help him out and he said I bid it it's like normal price and I said I was under like people come in and they they charge like his uh, his work would be like twelve thousand dollars and somebody else comes and do it for three and a half thousand dollars large wow. Form of wow and then that contractor who bid it he we call him and say hey i have a fireplace to do can you you want to come and do it he said where's the job it's here it's like i said i bid it and it's like twelve thousand dollars said so you want to say we underbid it I said uh, yeah i want to say you underbid it yeah. because some people like they bid and they don't know how to do it uh, and that, so they bid for, right. Yeah. No, they just yeah. bid to get a job. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. what happens. And, you know, it's, it's like, it's sometimes it's so sad when people does that, you know, and they don't even have ability to do the job. And a lot of granite companies trying to do that. And like, I got a, I closed the deal last week with one builder here in Calgary. He called me and said, oh yeah, like our granite shop would do it. And they would try to do the best, but they have to bring a tile setter to mix mortar for them. I said, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. You know, I said, granite shop, how granite is installed? PL and silicone most of the time. They even don't know how to mix fencing. This is the most important thing on it. And I said, did they suggest you to put a cement board or dent shield or something on that plywood on the fireplace? No. I said, you can't install on the plywood. It's going to fall. Right. Yeah. It's not going to hold. It's just, it's all your miters going to crack and all this kind of stuff because wood is moving, especially here in Alberta. Yeah. Winters is so dry. Right. It's, it's, you see the gaps that separate on the hardwood because it's so dry, everything shrinks. And in summer, everything expands because it's so humid. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you got to have it's it. It's right. a different, different place in the, of the world. You know, you can't yeah. do that. It's yeah. just. So, what, what percentage of your work is coming from general contractors or builders and what percentage directly to the homeowner? Oh, you know, it's like, I would say 25, 25, 25, 25. Okay. And, uh, even, it's like, even split. It's like I have builders I work with yeah. and I have builders I quote jobs for them, but I never get, but then they recommend me some from other builders. Yeah. Which is fine with me. Sure. You know, yeah. like I know sometimes their budget doesn't allow to hire me, yeah. you know, because they, they bid to build a house way before Towsers comes in and they have right. their budget. And uh, what I do when I come to bid those jobs, I say, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. Why do you include this, 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 and this? 
and then they kind of you know if they're gonna hire me they have to do all that stuff so they to eliminate that problem they so they eliminate me and they take somebody else who don't complain about those stuff and then they do that job and you know still warranties and maybe they go and fix stuff after and a lot of times it lasts until warranty lasts and then after five years everything starts you yeah. know, falling apart, but the yeah. owner then does the renovation. Yeah. That's how it works. So, you know, and then I get um, I get some jobs through Instagram. Uh, I get some jobs from the past clients. Like, uh, you know, somebody hired me. Uh, let's say they saw my ad on house. They hire me. And, uh, and then I do good. And then you recommend for somebody else. For their friends, that's how it works. And a uh, little bit website, you know, like, I don't know, like Google for me didn't work yet. Like, when I did my website, I didn't set up my SEO properly. I'm still working on it, but I just have no time. Yeah, Instagram yeah. for me, it's the best website. I call it my website because you post your pictures and everything is there. That's it. Yeah, but website is always a lot of work. You have yeah. to, you know, write an article about it and you know adjust those pictures a little bit so it looks nice and presentable. On Instagram, you don't care. It's just, All right. oh, it's a nice shot. Boom, that's yeah. it, and it's there. And people just pressing hearts for you. You know, that's what I want. <laughs> I want to be loved. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Who doesn't want to be loved? Well, let us know over at Happy Tile Guy if we can help you with your website. I know it's a pain to do it yourself. And um, yeah. we I'll, I can send you some info. And I was going to show, you know, share your Instagram page. If, if nobody, if people listening are, are not following you, you should really go check out its Instagram page. It is beautiful. And I, I can tell, though, that you're you're taking some time when you're when you're taking these photos um, to get, you know, quality lighting just right and, and things of that nature. I mean, it looks really good. Yeah. This is actually my own house. Oh, the is this your those, house? Yeah. All those crazy things I can do only at home. That's what I was going to ask you about. Is this sync? Is, is, you know, who, who, cause, it, cause I, I like the way you, you know, you talked about it. I, I'm not sure if you said it was, was in your house, but you made it sound like, you know, it was yeah. a custom request, which obviously it was, that's true. Yeah. So how it happened, I came to a porcelain also store. And they have a sink like this. Yeah. It's just a round bowl, not square. Mm-hmm. So I looked at it and I asked, I said, guys, can I get a deal? Because it's uh, $6,500, that sink. Wow. Said, I'm not going to pay for a piece of metal <laughs> with a little bit of marble on it, $6,500, because yeah. it's just crazy too much. So we went down to 4700 I said, no, it's still too much. And I took pictures and I showed my friend, he's a blacksmith. Yeah. And I said, can you do it? He said, sure. He said, not a problem. Hmm. So we did out of aluminum. And, uh, and then I did in that same bathroom, I had this, uh, it's a porcelain, also Ewood um, porcelain uh, slabs, which looks like, uh, like wood and the texture and everything. It's, it's just great stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I had leftover and I did it. Um, I did it, you know, on the sink. So it all matches with interior. Yeah. Well, we have in it, so yeah, it's so, a yeah, it's and, a gorgeous um, thing. Have you sold any? Have you uh, have you sold any yet? Uh, you know, I was not thinking to sell it. Oh, really? Um, I did it for myself. If somebody who sees it wants it, I can make it. Sure, it's so pricey. I know why it costs six thousand dollars because for me, my blacksmith cost me two thousand dollars on that sink with powder coating, metal, and work. Yeah, and then I water jetted this tile. And it's another hundred bucks mm-hmm. because I can't cut it this much. Like this particular uh, badge of this porcelain tile was just exploding when you're cutting it. So, uh, you know, I was kind of scared to cut it myself. So I took the water jet. I yeah. might can do it now on a new batch. I did one job recently. It's on Instagram where I have to cut doorways off uh, to get with those big slabs. And those, that one I can cut. I feel confident on that one. But right. oh yeah, so that's, that's what I... That's what I told you about challenge. That's what I like. And it's challenge. Yeah. And, you know, the final result is like, I, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. No, you have some challenging jobs on this, um, on your Instagram page. If you guys aren't following him at LFT pro on Instagram, um, make sure to follow mine. This, this fireplace was a trip. I was looking at this fireplace and the reflection was just as great as the TV, but then this, oh, this yeah, shower is yeah. just gorgeous. Yes, actually, with the same tile, I did even exterior. Um, I had to remove exterior pictures from because customer kind of was complaining. He let me in the beginning and then he said, no, can you please take it off? I don't want to show my location. Oh. I did in the same tile, 2,000 square feet on exterior wall. 
So wow. it's all book matched. And uh, it was challenging because uh, here is, you know, the weather. Like we have Chinook, which is, I don't know, are you familiar with Chinook wind? No. So Chinook wind is, it's like, uh, it's a warm weather stream from Pacific Ocean for the mountains. And uh, it could be like minus 20 in yeah. the morning. In the afternoon, it's going to be plus 10. Oh, wow. Wow. And then it's going to cool off again at night. So it's very quick uh, temperature change in, uh, in, in weather. And like you see that arch above in the sky. So like you see that cloud arch and it's a clear sky above the mountains. So that warm weather from Pacific Ocean gets to prairies. Mm. And it gets so warm. It's wow. like literally you can walk in a t-shirt. You know, yeah, it's like yeah. it was minus 20 in the morning and boom, it's like spring. Yeah. So, you know, and I, and I did a lot of research how to do it properly because ventilated facade would be the best way to do large form of tile, mm-hmm. but we don't have a lot of systems here. Mm-hmm. It's like I'm trying to find, I found the manufacturers in Europe, but it's so hard to bring it here and, uh, and um, get all of those certifications and everything. It's just, it's a lot of work. I would like to do it. Like I really enjoy doing it exterior and with ventilated facades would be, you know, any weather you can do it. Mm. So that wouldn't be a problem. And, uh, so I came up with my own recipe. I talked with Artex, uh, technical rep, like a couple hours on the phone. And I said, what I'm going to do, of course, it's no warranty because, here in Alberta, when you install tile on exterior on the wood, no warranty. Mm-hmm. So even like I don't install directly on the wood. So we applied, we primed the plywood on the walls like OSB. Then we applied fin set. We put cement board. We put uh, screws with washers. Then we waterproof three coats of 8 plus 9 over top the surface. This is my house too. Oh, this is your house too? So you yeah. clad, you, you clad yeah, your house? Yeah, I put porcelain on it. So it looks like a glass and people say, oh, can I touch it? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's changed now. I built a porcelain. and it's like, it was my summer project and the free time. So yeah, this job came out yeah, amazing. Um, just yeah, beautiful. It's like, you know, I, I'm really happy with it, too, how it's turned out. It's like, and I want to showcase more because people be afraid to use you know, tile on exterior. But, and, and what I say, if it's done right, it's never going to fail. Right. You know, if you're going to save money on this kind of thing, it's, it's just, of course, it's not going to last. You know, if people just going to, you know, dots on the back and just slap it right. and, and everything gets behind it, of course, it's going to fall. Yeah. You know, the freeze and fall cycle does all of it. Yeah. You know, for, you know right. So, yeah, if it's installed right, it's, it's good. And of course, good things. You yeah. know, good thin set is the, the key of every any installation on exterior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good thin set, good coverage. You know, all those good yep. things. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's and like, you put it on your house, so you know that shows your confidence. I mean, you're gonna find out. You know, but it it, it will last. I mean, it, you're you're hundred percent right. You know, it's all it's all in the prep work. Yeah. When you when you got all those corners, like ninety degree corners, split a tile. Yeah. Don't make a, out of yourself a hero. You know, I can, <laughs> right. this, you know, corner, it's going to crack. It's, yeah. it's like, yeah. it's going to crack. You know, interior is different thing. You can, you know, you can make it, but you still, you have to round that kind of tiny corner. You have to round it. So you take the stress off. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, it's better tell customer in advance what yeah. problems could be. And then say, I will split it. You're not going to see that ground line because everything's going to match and run nice and straight. And you'll be happy. So that's what, that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's good though that Instagram's working out good for you. That you're you're getting quite a few leads for new work, new contracts. I don't have too many followers. I'd like to have more. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, well, you're out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, above three thousand. Yeah. And then, do you send people there too? Just you know, I'm, it's it's nice because you can just send people. Oh, fo- follow me on Instagram. I mean, everybody's on yeah, Instagram. You know, so. even like people maybe they don't follow, but I say you can see my work on Instagram mm-hmm. because it's the easiest platform because everybody today is on Instagram, right? And they can see it. Of yeah. course, I need mean, another thing. I will show quickly if it's going to be visible. This is the yeah, like a catalog. It's ten. Oh, it's just yeah, because everything is opposite. So what I did is all my works in a book. Yeah, you know, and yeah. I bring that book with me to the customer, and while we talk, we can just see my work in it. Yeah. And it's and it's, uh, the app. Like actually, I found this app on uh, Instagram. It's a chat books. Mm-hmm. It's not expensive. Yeah. It's made in US, and they did it so quick. 
I, uh, I put all the pictures in. If you want to put a comments on it, you can put a comments and be printed in. And I got it in two weeks. Wow. So yeah. It's quick shipping. And it's like in US, it's even faster. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's good. I, I like know, the book yeah. idea. I like it a lot. I've actually heard about, you know, using this book when you sell, like you bring it to your job. Some contractors will actually put the price, like, you know, the price of maybe a, a really nice shower, a really expensive shower, and then maybe a moderate shower. And then maybe like, this is your basic shower. This is what this much money gets you. And then, you know, you tease them a little bit. You know, I don't do that. No. I tell you why. It's like when you put a price, you can scare a person right away. Yeah. Okay. You know, what I say Every project is unique mm -hmm. and special. Yeah. And I say, your project is special and it's going to be like, I say what it, how it's going to look like. And you can't put a same price tag on exactly the same one because sometimes you run into the problem and they're going to say, oh, but the help on it looks exactly the same, but right. my one is more money. That's right. Why. Right. I work with one company. They used to advertise in a, in a magazine. Uh, like in the newspaper, it's like a basic, medium, and luxury. Right. And with those prices. And of course, they were getting a lot of work. Yeah. But the materials we supply, it's so cheap. You know, it's one thing in the newspaper and another thing in reality. Right. So I, just, I did a few bathrooms for them and said, no, thank you. I don't want to do Kind of like the anymore. picture of a McDonald's cheeseburger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one thing in yeah. the picture. A complete another thing in reality. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. All those commercials, too, you know, Wendy's, and w McDonald's, those burgers are so juicy and nice, but when you get it, it's so tiny and dry. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so how do, how do you convey the value to your customer though? Cause a lot of tile contractors really do struggle with this is saying, look, I, you know, I am going to get you to where you want. I, I am going to do the, the most beautiful bathroom for you. I am going to get you your every desire here. It's hard to convey that. And, and we're talking about a couple different things here. We're talking about, you know, pictures, some sales tactics, maybe not, not such great sales tactics that people like McDonald's use and some companies, some tile companies, um, and everybody has to choose for themselves. But if you're going to be the artisan, you know, craftsman with a, with an apprentice, how do you sell yourself sell your value so that you, you can command, um, a good, a good amount. What, what kind of so help? My, my key is when I come and talk with a customer, first thing, sometimes you have that zing, you know, with the customer, like you kind of relate, Yeah, you have to be likable, mm -hmm. you know, it's like you have to be nice, polite, you know, you have to respect their property, you know, when you come to talk with them and, uh, you, you cannot, you know, show out of yourself, like, Oh, I'm God, you know, no, it's like you, at, at that point, he's your future boss because he's going to be paying your wages, you mm -hmm. know, so you have to be nice and you have to become a friend in the first place. And then you talk, you, you talk not only about a tile, you have to talk about what happens, you know, around you, you know, in the world, like how we cope with, at this point with COVID-19, how right. we feel about it. But you have those kind of questions. So you don't say something against it, like, probably like in us for you guys like if you talk about a president you can get kicked out of the house very quick right so you have right. to be careful in this place and in this position you have to be like a weasel mm -hmm. you have to you know change it to the subject what they like it doesn't yeah. nobody cares what you like or right not. you can <laughs> bring your opinion to them that's solid so that's all you do and when you talk with them you know and uh and you always listen what your customers say mm -hmm. you know you, like I, I know some other guys what they do when they come to the job site and stuff five bathrooms so what, whatever he sees is just a dollar so right. he's living in his, his, his eyes I will make money but you don't know what the budget is nothing so it's always like you know you have to learn about your customer while you're talking mm -hmm. and then give them suggestions yeah. because most of the time people they don't know what they want mm -hmm. unless they have a desire when they have a designer, they don't care because designer service costs a lot of money. Right. So, you know, then you deal with designer. You talk with designer. And in this case, when you talk with designer, you don't bring anything up. But you don't, they don't care about your idea because, like, originally I finished art school and I became an interior designer. This is my trade. Oh, really? But I never been one. Oh. <laughs> because, like... You know, I, I, I love to draw when I was a kid. Yeah. And I got in art school and I became a designer and florist. Mm -hmm. But it's nothing related to what I do now. Right. But it helped me because I have a good, like, visualization in right. my head. I can see every project I do. 
I can walk into the bed bath and I can see how it's going to look like. And, you know, so with a designer, I can't do that mm-hmm. because the designer, he knows what he's doing. Even if you know, he's don't know, but you have to agree with that. And sure. okay, this is people hired him. That's what we're going to do. Cause I got one lesson in my, in my experience. I start working with one guy just right when I came to Canada, uh, you know, I worked for Flesher for six months, and that's it. Flesher Marble and Tiles, a big company. We had that airport contract, but I can't work for somebody where, you know, you just uh, kind of like a helper. Mm-hmm. I hate it. Yeah. So I started my own business. I got a job as a subcontractor with another tile setter, and I came in to do the job, and I got a house for, for myself, entire house, so nobody from his company was working in there. And of course, customer came in and I started talking and introduced myself. And I said, no, I think you should do this. Mm-hmm. And they didn't say anything. And then I get a phone call after two hours and the guy, you know, who hired me says, okay, mind. So you're going to do this for free. That what you suggested to the customer, because nobody asked your opinion. Right. So from then I stopped doing that because you know, if they settle on something, they quoted the job and this is extra. Nobody right. wants to pay extra. Right. You know, customer, of course, would be happy if I will do it. And then I did it because I'm a man of my word. I said it's going to look better. I did it and everybody was happy at the end, but I didn't get paid for it. But who cares? Right. It was my fault. And, uh, and you know, and and, and that's, that, that's another thing, what it is, you know, so... So it's all these things, lessons and uh, mistakes, and that's what keeps us going. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, we got to learn. So you yeah. you do work with designers today, right? Uh, I do. From time I to do time. Work. Is that tough? Is that tough? favorite ones. Yeah. And I have designers I don't like, but I work. Yeah, you keep working with them. Is that, is that I mean, is that tough for you, especially with that background and, and your skill, you know? Um, I mean, that's got to be tough at times to, you know, bite your bite your tongue, so to speak. Uh, it is, you know, because a lot of times you have a real designers and you have a housewife designers, you know, a right. rich husband and she, she decides to become a designer. Right. Right. So, you know, it's like, but some of them is great. Yeah. yeah. Like it's be down to earth and, you know, you can talk and, you know, make jokes and, you know, everything works out good. And some of them, we don't know a lot about a large form of tile and you, and you explain the sequence of everything that has to be done and they say, yeah, I can see now and, and they, they go with it. And okay. other designers that have, they just love large format tile and they want to do large format tile. And some other designers, they say, oh, I have bad experience with it. I don't want to even see it on my jobs. Mm. You know, so that's what I said, you know, some customers, you know, like, like you have to be like a weasel, you know, you, you kind of becoming more like him or the, whatever he may like and you just agree with it so if you want to close the job or sometimes you come in and it doesn't make sense what we want to do it so you just jack your price up and you hoping you're not going to get a job right all right it's the same with designers but you know what where, where designers is involved is always good money mm-hmm. yeah that's what i found as well it's it's worth the money to uh you know to basically just do you know shut up and do what they want you to do and just yeah, charge enough. You do, your, you do your thing. If something doesn't like customer on the details, it's not your fault. Right. Yeah. It's and a beautiful you think, thing. Yeah. Talk with your designer. I, I did it when he asked me to do it. Yeah. And yeah. then the designer comes and can you change it? Can you do differently? How are you going to do it? I say this, 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 and this, and it's going to be extra money. And we say, okay, let's do it. And I get paid. <laughs> yeah, so. Nice. That's great, man. I love it. It's a good attitude. So what are the biggest struggles that you're you're having with your company right now? Anything? particular employees it's the biggest one is employees i know it's like i remember i was listening hot style podcast uh, with ken and what that's what he says kids don't want to do it mm. and this is true you know it's like i think when we'll be 70 we're still going to be tiling <laughs> what? You know, yeah that's that's the problem tile will never go away right and you know it's Hopefully. like we got those you know plastic coverings you know in the showers but it's not the solution. It needs to be replaced all the time. And, and, and I, I'd like more young kids to get into it, but everybody wants big buck right away. Mm. And it's, it's tough. So I had so many times in my career opportunity to grow. Yeah. But you just kind of trying to grow. You hire a few new guys and then you see the useless, you're letting them go. And then you, 
that's it. You you get to the point zero again, and then you kind of pull the handbrake and you slow down, and then you you go steady. Yeah. At this point, I, I'd like to grow my company big. You know, I like as every tile setter dreams not to tile, but be in this business mm-hmm. because that's what we know. What we like, that's what we do for the living, and we understand we probably. Like, First to me, I like to talk. I'd like to go and talk with customers better than be on tools all the time. Right. But at the end of the day, it's impossible. And uh, and I have to do it. You know, and it's like it's that's that's the hardest thing. Yeah. I I have enough work, you know. I'm not like other guys you know, booked until the end of the next year. I can be if I want to, but what's the point? Mm-hmm. You know. To have a job next year summer, but you know maybe meteor gonna fall on Earth and it's gone. So I don't, I don't plan that far. Yeah, I know I'm busy until Christmas, and I have plenty of work. I have a lot of loose ends to finish and other jobs because uh, delays and you know and things not ready, and then you know you kind of like too much in one file, and then you're just trying to finish those jobs. Yeah, and also it's kind of a little bit stressful, but and then. You know, you just kind of take a deep breath and say, ah, I will be done when I will have time. You know, I do call customers and say, look, I can't this time. I will come back. And it's like, it's just a little things. And, you know, that those things happen. So it's like nobody's perfect. You yeah. know, it's like, it's no perfect company, even like probably in the US and here, you know, you will always have something uh, happening. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, it's like, and next year I have a big job. I'm going to another province to do for another guy, and it's like, it's a big, large format tile job. And it's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm scared of it because my helper who works with me, be expecting baby soon, so he's gonna take mm. off. I'm gonna be on my own. Mm-hmm. You know, I had right. another guy. He said like, oh, dust is not good for me, so he quit working. You know, and like right. he spent entire year investing in him and training him right and then he decides not to work in construction anymore it's like that's what it is yeah yeah and you know like i'm i was thinking maybe to team up with somebody you know another tile setter and just yeah but then how are you gonna split the profits and everything else always somebody's not gonna be happy so he's gonna say oh i did harder work and i i did this i did that and it's just it's yeah. it, it is hard it's like it as long as it pays my bills, I can make money, I can support my helper, and that's what I care at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we'll see, you know, when all this pandemic's going to change, what's going to change, you know? And it's like, at this point, we just adapted to what it is. And, right. Yeah. You know, trying to save, to stay safe, and, you know, and that's it. Yeah, that's about all we can do right now is ride yeah, it out, right? Yeah. I did, I did interview um, Aunt Primo. I know you yeah. probably follow Aunt Primo on Instagram, uh, at Primo Tiles, I think it is. And um, he he has a partner. That, that might be an interesting one. And I, I'm not sure if that podcast came out yet, maybe next week or the week after. But uh, he has a partner. And what he did is he found somebody that had, you know, a, a little bit different strengths than he did. In other words, he really wanted to focus on the business and growing it. And, and the, the partner had, um, maybe some more, you know, he, he really enjoyed being in the field and doing commercial work and stuff like this. So, you know, that's that, that, I mean, that would be my advice, you know, for anybody looking for maybe a partner, because I've, I've had those same thoughts like, Oh, do you partner up with somebody, but then where are the profits, you know, and like, yeah. like you mentioned, you know, if, if they're worth their money, they're worth their money. And, and so you have to pay them. Um, but if you can find somebody that kind of excels where you um, kind of fall short, that, that would be the best fit for partners. That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> but that's a tricky situation. This is a very tricky situation. It's like yeah. marriage. Right, you know? right. It's, it is tricky when it's divorce. You know, it's, yeah. If it doesn't work out, it's divorce. So no. Right, right. It's like, yeah, it is, it is hard. I better... My like my philosophy is to get a completely green guy mm-hmm. and train the way you work. Mm-hmm. Because when you get somebody else's helper, they don't work as you want them to right. do. You know, they don't mix pin set properly. Like my biggest issue with my helpers is mixing pin set. Mm-hmm. This is the biggest issue. Yeah. You know, like in the beginning when I started my career, I liked, you know, uh, I liked a little bit more heavy. 
you know, it's like, you know, stiffer or like, or more soupy. Yeah. But this is not the way to mix Vincent. You have to follow what it says on the bag. Right. And, uh, you know, I know Laticrete that sponsors you. Actually, I got two bags of that um, Max Light or whatever. It's their product. Yeah. So I got a few bags to try. And uh, I didn't try it yet, but I'm an Ardex guy. Right. I'm a big time Ardex guy because with a large form of tile, the most important thing is mixing time. Ardex, it's three minutes to mix and no remixing. Oh, really? Yeah. So that's, and, and it's so important. I did last year a massive job. It's a three and a half thousand square feet of large form of tile floor. It's a wow. large form, of, it's four feet by four feet, thin mm-hmm. panel yeah. through the entire house. And we did with Schluter all set. To mix one bag, it's 20 minutes, mm. which is a lot of time. Yeah. A day, we have 10 hours. <sighs> so you mixing, you know, yeah. it's like 200 minutes. It's three hours. It's just the mixing of inset. Right, right, right. So, and the Arctic, it's only three minutes. So it's way more inset we can mix. You know, it's always you wait for that. And it is great inset, but it's just not for the big jobs and not large form of tile. Because with large form of tile, you're applying mortar on the back of a tile and you're applying mortar on a floor. Yeah. And you don't want to skim coat because otherwise it's not going to bond. So yeah. Yeah. That's, that's things, you know, that's why I'm angry at my helpers when they don't mix properly. I hear drill, you know, screaming. So I set the time and it comes with a bucket to say, go back. Why? <laughs> it's only two and a half minutes. <laughs> you go back with that bucket and remixing. So, well, you think so they'd yeah. learn that lesson pretty quick. Oh yeah, they learned. And actually, it took a month. Yeah, like, they learned. Yeah, yeah. and now, so you so all the time is the same thin set, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what you need. It's consistency, right? Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. you know what? I did few times when they mix and it's really stiff, so I don't send them to remix and I say, okay, spread on the floor. Mm. You know, when you get that big pile, you have to apply a lot of force to spread it out. I said, how does it feel? It is hard. I said, yeah. So scrape it off. Go mix new one. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, spend some like, time yeah, with them. Uh, be learning hard way yeah yeah well listen mine i really appreciate this interview i mean uh we talked about a lot of good stuff you know getting to know people uh selling you know people buy from people and you, and you really express that well when you said well look we just get to know each other we you know we try to be a, you know i i look for things that i connect with people right you know i looked i look at the the house they're living in and, and their lifestyle to see if we're maybe a good fit you know that tips you off and um so so much other good stuff in there too i know people are gonna really enjoy this mine appreciate it thank you yeah thank you for having me you know i was really nervous in the beginning <laughs> Uh, it's like when, on TV, you know. It's yeah. like on TV, you know. Uh, everybody's watching you. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's very exciting. It's really like I really appreciate having me here. You know, it's like you know, it's like I, you know, if you have any questions in the future, want me to have it? Yeah, you're welcome all the time. You know, it's like and another thing. What I want to do, I want to train a little bit people on a large format tile. Yeah, because we have a lot of hacks around who don't know what to be doing. Be right. go large formats with a grinder, and we don't want to invest in tools. So it's it's no way. Right. You know. Oh yeah, that's miserable. My goodness. Yeah, I'm I'm fighting for the tile, for the large form of tile, because I had a lot of times when contractor gets in, he does it wrong, and the builder don't want to use it anymore. Right. But that builder builds luxury homes, and they could use in every single one. Yeah. So that you know, I'm kind of ambassador for the large form of tile. Well, that's what we need. I mean, this is the danger of these products. I mean, even even you know, one foot by one foot tiles. You know, the danger is, is that there's too many failures out there. And in the yeah. U.S., it sounds like in Canada, too, where you're at all over the world, we're seeing people just install tile um, incorrectly. And obviously, this has been going on for years. But the danger is when you said earlier in, in the podcast, you said, like, tile will be here forever. And I kind of, you know, I was kind of like, well, hopefully, you know, because the truth of the matter is, is people always want quicker cheaper, faster. And then in, in a lot of cases, it's not about the money. It's just, well, we want reliability. And so yeah. when a company comes in and says, well, our plastic is reliable and, and it only takes an hour, but, but it does cost. I mean, sometimes these companies are charging quite a bit for plastic yeah. tub bathtubs and showers. Um, and so we do want to, you know, like you say, be the ambassador for LFT or mosaics or whatever type of tile you're working in, because it is a trade that um, that we need. And I, I think that is the key too to our, um, our employees, 
you know, yeah. lack of employees is really, you know, setting that standard a little higher, you know, showcasing it. That's why I really enjoy Instagram seeing, you know, guys like you who are putting out this quality work and also your personality, you know, you're, you're letting your personality shine through on, you know, some of your posts, you know, very personal, um, life stuff, you know, like your motorcycles and, yep. and so your clients find you, the youth find you and they say, Hey, I can, I, I, I can connect with mind. You know, I, I kind of feel, you know, I, I dig motorcycles too. Yeah. Maybe I should call up mine and, you know, see if he has an opportunity for me or if they've been following you for a while and you put an opportunity out there for them. I mean, I think this is the yeah. way, this is the only way to the future. You know, we, we just have to try to connect with people. I mean, people buy from people, people want to work with people and get to know you. So it's a great thing. Yeah. And I get a lot actually inquiries, like just to other guys from, from us, from mm-hmm. Australia, asking about how to do you know large format i always re- reply always letting them know about the tools and you know i always give my opinion so if anyone have any questions yeah you can always shoot me text message you know on uh, instagram i will always reply yeah you know it's like we all together in this mud so we should be muddy friends you that's know? it's it. like you know it's that's our life you know we should help each other you know and anything we do you know if you and sometimes if you see something is wrong just you know you need another secondary opinion always you know even even a home like a customer or a home builder if you see your house does something wrong ask it just always ask right yeah yeah it's it so doesn't good. cost anything to ask right yeah yeah well i appreciate appreciate you being on the podcast mine thank you luke all right well you have a great day Oh yeah, you too. Bye. All right, Tile friends. I know you enjoyed that episode. I know I sure did myself. Uh, I want to remind you, if if you need a website, head over to happytileguy.com and you can get started with a Happy Tile Guy website uh, created for tile contractors by tile contractors. All right, that's it for this week. Remember, stay profitable out there, Tile friends. Talk to you next week.